because they they have not put i don't think south africa is on the red list for them anymore when warren gets back to new zealand now and analyzes the whole series what do you think would be his main regrets um probably that they just didn't play the width more i i, I would just okay we're, we're all talking about finn russell and the energy and attacking kind of energy where you play the game and we, and we created problems for South Africa but I, I just think against the box more than any other team in world rugby there's it's risk and reward playing to width if you get it right you, you can cause them huge problems um, the way they defend they come hard off the line you get it wrong you're in trouble uh, they can turn the ball over and you lose significant yardage and, and that can swing games in their favour but just probably to take more risk um, I think that would be the biggest you know, when he does get back to New Zealand, uh, probably a little bit too conservative against a side which prides themselves on being conservative and, and kind of very, relatively low risk. I think to, to beat a side like South Africa, and traditionally down the years, you look at the teams that have beaten the box, they've gone and played um, and taken risk. And so, yeah, it's probably probably, probably just a bit, little bit too cautious. Um, I would have liked to have seen them play a bit more to win. I suppose, I suppose it's easy to say, you know, maybe one of his regrets might be not to have started Finn Russell from, from the first test match. Or let's say if he was if he was fit, he had the, the Achilles injury, I think it was. But but then again, uh, and I mean, Ryan, you probably know better than than, than us, um, you know, Finn Russell blows hot and cold as well. So you, so you need to ask the question, you know, you start with him three test matches in a row, um, he's probably going to fire at full cylinder for, for one test, but then, you know, will, will he be able to do that for three test matches in a row and, and provide them also the stability that you need to be able to win a, a series? So, you know, a retrospect is so easy, but I think for, for Gatlin, he's, he's content in, 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 what he, in what he did in the selections that he made. And uh, I actually did the post-match interview with him on Saturday, and he was like, he, he don't think they, they got it wrong anywhere. It was just on the day, a bit of luck, and it didn't go their way. I think if they had Finn as an option, they would have done better because they would have been able to change it up a lot. I mean, they had Marcus Smith, they brought in a like-for-like -like replacement, but I don't think they really trusted him to, to go on and do what he does. I think he's too young, probably didn't have enough experience, which is a bit of a shame because they brought him out there and I don't think they ever had the intention of playing him. Um, but Finn Russell, if he's there and he's on the bench and he's available for all the tests, start him for one, put him on the bench for another, mix it up, yeah. it, it just gives... Gives them a little bit of a different style of attack so that then South Africa have to adapt a little bit and they can find weaknesses. So I reckon, yeah, if, if he had his way, he would have had Finn Russell available for, for all three of the tests so they could have chopped and changed yeah. a bit. Is Gatlin still the best person to be leading the next, the next Lions tour? Because I know there's been a lot of whispers about Scott Robinson taking over. Oh, he's he's obviously one name that's been tripped. Does that It'll be interesting to see whether Warren does the next tour? I, I mean, he's done all three. You know, he's he's headed up a tour in uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa now. So I guess you do you naturally assume that that's you know he's he's done his he's done his fair share, um, or he goes and manages his fourth one uh, and tries to repeat what he what he achieved in 2013 with the squad we had. So. Yeah, we'll see in a couple of years' time. <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of chat about it over the next few weeks and that'll all disappear uh, as we look, look ahead to the World Cup in France in a couple of years. But there's also a lot of... Sorry, there's also there's an awful lot of chat uh, in the media about the future of the Lions and if there's enough space in the calendar to fit it in, et cetera, et cetera. How important is it, uh, do you all think, to keep the Lions going? I, know, I wouldn't have ever even questioned that that was you know, something that was up for discussion. Yeah, it doesn't need to be questioned, does it? That's crazy that they're even talking about that. That's just someone trying to get get a, a bit of an article out there. There's no way on earth they're thinking of canning the lines. I can't. I can't see that as well. Uh, and I think it's only in the northern hemisphere where 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 that debate is might be ongoing. Certainly, yeah, in South Africa, and I'm pretty sure Australia, New Zealand. Um, you know, we we see the Lions as such a critical part of the, the rugby calendar and of the rugby cycle. Uh, and, and I can't imagine, I really can't imagine rugby without the Lions. It's, it's something that I, that I grew up with, you know, in, a, in apartheid South Africa, you know, not being able to play against the Lions and, 
um, and seeing how special it is and then eventually being able to, to get the opportunity to play in the Lions series. It is, it is one of the biggest moments in a rugby player's career, you know, if you're based in South Africa. And uh, to take it away, I just, you know, I, I can't see it happening. Obviously, it needs to be financially viable. Um, and and if, they can, if they can do it in empty stadiums as they did this year, then surely there's no reason why they, why they can't do it and make it financially viable in any other year. John, can you give us an insight into what Razzy is like as a man and a coach? Because I think he's almost developed a bit of a pantomime villain persona over here. Yeah, look, there's, um, he, he actually put a video out of about an hour and three minutes where you can see his personality quite <laughs> clearly. Um, go watch it. Uh, no, look, Rassi is, I think he's one of, those, one of those guys that rugby is his everything. Okay, so he, he played the game of rugby. He, he's now coaching it. I don't think he's, he's experienced life without rugby being, being part of that. So he takes it very personally. He takes it very seriously, and he and he and he does whatever he can to you know to get to get results. So um, off the field, he's a fantastic guy. You know, I can remember when he was coaching the Stormers still, uh, and, I, and I was captain, and we'd go for for Wednesday Wednesday afternoon golf uh, golfing, and and we'd break away a little bit and, and have a couple of beers, you know, on the course kind of thing. And you know, he's a he's a he's a great guy to be around then. But he he takes his rugby extremely seriously. Um, and I think that comes out in the way that he prepares, the work that he puts in, and um, you know, and it's something that's that's pretty close close to his heart. So when you see a video like that that coming out and and all the um, the comments around that, I think it's because it's again an opportunity that comes around once in a coach's life, and you need to do whatever you can to to hopefully get get the results that that's needed and. And he felt that he was treated unfairly. And, you know, so that's still up in the air. Um, but, you know, I can't, uh, he, his passion for rugby is certainly there. Yeah, I don't think you, t- you could take that away from him. Does he ever switch off? Like, or is it just constant? I feel like, is he kind of similar to, I know um, I was told with Joe Schmidt, he was like that. He just even, you know, at socials or whatever, when people are trying to just So you were living with of- Joe Schmidt? No. Oh, I said when I was living with Joe Schmidt, I was like, what? No, I was told with Joe as well. He was very much like even in his off time or if he was at a social and people are just trying to relax and switch off from rugby, he was just constantly talking about rugby and trying to analyze and think. Like, is that is that the way Razzie is? He just does I, not switch off. I think that's exactly the same. I think it's exactly the same. And, and look, John Ninov is, is not not far behind. You know, they they've come and worked together for for a long time. And um, you know, rugby rugby is just part of their part of their lives. So I think it will be very similar to, to a Joe 